Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for Game Week 12 where I show you my plans. But before we do that, let's look at Game Week 11 and who did well in the Midnight Mule Mini League. Top scorer for Game Week 11 in our Mini League was Joel V. Jojo with JVJFC with 98 points, which is very good with no tips played. That was Captain Fernandez for 34, Salah for 14, Kuna for 11, Delap for 11. And then Fabianski 9, Aiton Nori 6, and Bremo 5. And then nothing left on the bench, so very nice. And top of our league is Robert Burt with Rob Stell 11. They managed 79 points, which is still very good. That was with Captain Salah 28, Fernandez 17, Fabianski 9, Delit 6, Poro 4, and that's all. And then nothing on the bench. I'm all the way down in 363rd. I got 65 points. That was with Captain Salah 28, Smithrow 11. Apart from that, 8 Nori 6, Harland and Raoul 5. Now, I was deliberating right up to the deadline whether to play Ramsdale or Fabianski in goal. I thought Fabianski would be the better choice. He had the better game. But I thought if Ramsdale keeps a clean sheet and Fabianski doesn't, I'd find that quite irritating. So I played Ramsdale so I wouldn't get irritated about him outscoring Fabianski. But of course he didn't. Fabianski got nine points. So I made the wrong choice there. But <laughs> it's not that important really. So 65 points overall. Game week rank within the one and a half million. So I got another green arrow. Three of the last four weeks were green arrows. So that's nice. The way I'm playing I'd expect most weeks to get a small green or a small red. I will get both, but I'm hoping to get more greens than reds, but we'll have to see how that works out. Now, you might think 2.7 million nearly is not a good rank, but my plan in the season was, and I said this at the beginning, I'm going to take lots of hits early on to get some money, which I did, and then I was going to gradually climb up the ranks, which is what I'm doing now. So my next target is by game week 19 to be 1.6 million, and I think that's still doable, so let's see if I manage that. So this is from Live FPL. They've got a new page out recently where they predict which players are going to go up and down in value. And it's really good and it's free. So I absolutely recommend you go and check that out. But from here you can see I'm 217 points behind top spot. Which means if I can outscore whoever's top by 8 points a week on average, I can still win the whole thing. Now if you've got a bad rank or you feel people online are boasting a bit, hey look at me I'm 300,000, which isn't that great. Don't worry about it. If you look at me, I'm 2.7 million. I'm closer to 50k than 50k is to top. So it's still really very, very crunched up. The ranks really don't matter at the moment. It's game week 38 that matters. And even then, what matters is you had a nice time and had fun during the, during the season. Thank you very much to everyone who watches these videos and subscribes and leaves comments, likes. But most of all, just watches them. Another website I look at regularly is FPL Game Week. They have a content creators league on there. And I like to see how I'm doing compared to other content creators. A good number of these I've met at different events and I contact them. But I also just like listening to their pods, watching their videos, etc. So FPL Tips is currently top. We've got James from Planet FPL. I love his stuff. He's a few points behind. And then Harry's down in fourth. Harry's had his own YouTube channel for a while. He's now got a second one. He appears on other channels and wouldn't be surprised if soon he presents the BBC weather or something. He's getting around a lot. As for me, I'm 63rd, which is seven points behind Gianni, 12 points behind Andy, and then 16 points behind Nima. So a little bit higher than last week. And my plan is to gradually, gradually go up and finish in the top third. That's my goal for the season. So the transfer I've already done, and I did this because I thought the prices were going to change and they haven't. Did this at last weekend. I sold Trent because I thought there's a good chance he's going to miss Southampton. And I brought in Robinson. And then I've got two free transfers. So for my other transfer, which I've not done yet, I intend to bring in Vardio. I've got different options here. Now I could sell Van de Ven because he tends to just be on my bench anyway and I'm not playing him. He's injured, he's a doubt for this game week. But I could instead sell Lewis. They're about the same price if I sell them. And so I've been trying to decide which one of these two. But then yesterday I realised I could actually sell Bednarak. 
Now, I was very happy with Bednarak. He was always last on my bench, four million defender, but he plays 90 minutes every week. And I don't want to be one of these managers that has 12 or 13 good players and you keep swapping them around according to the fixtures. I want 11 players. That's my team. That's where I'm playing. And then a very cheap bench of players that play, but there's no benching headache. So if I do Bednarak to Gvardio, then it means... I've got to make another transfer later on because I want my bench to have two four million pound defenders. However, Bednarak's currently flagged. He got injured in the international break. So I don't know which way I'm going to go. I'm not definitely going to get in Gvardio, but it's, I'd say, 90% chance I'm going to do it. But I don't yet know which defender I'm going to swap him for. So the way my team looks at the moment is I have Salah as captain. He's away to Southampton. I don't know if he's going to be the most captained. I think he will be the most captained among engaged managers. But throughout the whole base, it may well be Haaland who's going to be the most captained. He's at home to Tottenham and he's my vice captain this week. I'm currently showing Lewis here, but that may become Gvardio. And then I've got Robinson at home to Wolves with his mates Smithrow and Raoul. I've got Rogers at home to Palace. I think there could be some nice points there. And Rogers' fixtures over the next few weeks are very nice indeed. Palmer away to Leicester, Inori away to Fulham, and Bremer away to Everton, and I've got Fabianski away to Newcastle. And if you got points for picking the ball out the back of your net, he'd get me a lot of points this week, but it doesn't work that way, so I won't. I'm also very exposed, because if they decide to bring Ariola back, then I'm not going to have a keeper probably, because Ramsdale's my benched keeper, but he's got a broken finger. Now, I don't know if they keep having a broken finger is actually going to affect how well they do, but it's quite likely he's not going to play. And then I've got Wood. Now, I'm not very happy about benching Wood, but there's none of the other outfield players that I think are going to do worse than Wood away to Arsenal. So he's first on my bench just now. Then Van der Ven, who may be too injured to play, and Bednarak, who may be too injured to play. And then as for the background image... We had our first snow of the football season this week and what could be nice than a couple of kittens with a football in the snow. You can probably think a lot of things nicer but that's quite nice for me. And I'm doing this video earlier than normal because I took the day off work because I got the dentist and I get really anxious about the dentist because I'm a big girl's blouse so I just need to try and chill. So there we have it. That's what happened in game week 11 and my plans for game week 12. Thank you very much for watching. Look after your teeth and have a good game week 12. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>